Hey Red Raiders, Liv here, and today I'm going to be answering 20 frequently asked questions by college freshmen. I know that everybody, once they come into college, they're like, well, how does this work? What is student life like? They have so many different questions, and I'm here to answer those for you guys. I did some research and figured out 20 of the most popular asked questions, and I'm going to answer them right now, just for y'all. So let's get right into it. Alrighty guys, so the first question that's going to be asked is how do dining plans work? So at Texas Tech specifically, I'm not sure how it is anywhere else, but we have three different dining plans. We have the Double T, which is the smallest one, then we have the Matador, which is like a middle ground between the two, and then the Red and Black, which is going to be the biggest one. Um, the Double T one is going to have $1,420 dining dollars, um, and those are split between both semesters. And then the Matador is going to have $1,950, which again, split between both semesters. And then the red and black is going to have 24 or 240, oh my goodness, $2,435 dining dollars. Again, you guessed it, split between both semesters. Um, when you go to any dining hall location on campus, whether it's um, the Commons or the Market or Sam's Place West, you just scan your student ID card and you can get that entire meal with the money loaded on that card. All right, so another frequently asked question is gonna be number two, what are some Texas Tech traditions? I'm gonna talk about two specific ones, but there are a plethora of different traditions that we have at Texas Tech. The first one is gonna be Carol of the Lights, which is my personal favorite. I am such a Christmas person, it's insane. And so being able to watch with um, a thousands and thousands of other students and even the community in Lubbock to watch all of the lights um, turn on for Christmas is just so super cool. It's really magical, I'm gonna be honest, and it's really not like any experience you've ever experienced before. So I would definitely say um, do do that, go to Carol of the Lights at Texas Tech, and also just our pregame stuff for like football games, basketball games, just like watching everybody get so hype whenever we like do the little guns in the air um, at sporting events and whatnot. It's just super fun and it just kind of builds a sense of community. So I would say those are probably my favorite traditions at Texas Tech. There are definitely so many more though. Number three, and this is a big one, how do you manage social life and school life? I've talked about this in previous videos, but just making sure that you have plenty of time to do your schoolwork is super important. Um, you obviously wanna hang out with your friends, build that community, and you really do need it in college, but you're here to get a degree and that's gonna be the most important thing. So if it means like you can't go hang out with your friends on a Friday night because you have a test the next day or whatever, I don't know what the circumstance is, just make sure that you get your homework done prior to doing social activities. All right, so number four on this list is how do I apply for financial aid? So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to fafsa.gov and it's gonna tell you all the things you need to do, whether you're an incoming student or a returning student. And then for um, financial aid for Texas Tech specifically, you're gonna to go to departments.ttu.edu slash financial aid and it's gonna give you all of the things that you need to do in regards to grants, um, competitive scholarships for the university, loans, that kind of thing. And it'll have like drop down menus for you to um, pick and choose which one is gonna best suit your financial aid um, needs, I guess. And then um, as well as scholarships, I believe the deadline was February 1st, but if you're watching this in the future, um, they do open October 1st for um, university competitive scholarships. Alrighty, the fifth thing on this list is how long does it take to walk to your classes? This kind of depends just basically where you are on campus and where you're going. So I personally am in Coleman Hall, which is right next to Chitwood and Weymouth, which if you want kind of where to know where like what's around here, it's going to be like I'm right next to the wreck. I can see it out of my window right here. I'm right by the media and communications building, the architecture building. Um, so like say if I wanted to walk to Holden Hall, which is on like the complete other side of campus by Memorial Circle, that would probably be about a 20 minute walk. Um, but if I wanted to walk to MCOM or if I wanted to walk to Stangle to eat lunch, it's probably about a five minute walk. So it really just depends where you are on campus and where you're going. Okay, number six on this list is gonna be how do I manage stress? I would say pick one day out of your week where you don't really have a lot going on and just grind. Get the homework done, get the thing done you need for your job or a project or whatever it is. Most of my stress comes from not knowing how I'm gonna do on like exams or projects or whatever, or I feel like I don't have enough time for homework. But if you de uh, designate one day out of your week to just devote all your time to homework and everything, I promise that that stress will alleviate. Um, I do know that college is just a stressful time in general, so like taking a day to yourself is so important. All right, number seven on this list is going to be, are my professors willing to work with me? And the answer is absolutely. You really just need to find what works best for you and what works best for your professor. The best way to know about how your professor communicates and their deadlines and whatnot is to read the syllabus that they give you. That is going to be the key to your success, but also just be like totally vulnerable with them. Just being like, hey, like, this is something that I'm really struggling with or hey, I'm running behind on this thing. They will be so willing to work with you as long as you communicate because they're not gonna know how you are if you don't say anything. 
All right, so number eight on this list is going to be how do I get involved on campus? Well, I can tell you, pull out your computer, pull out your phone, and go to techconnect.com. This is going to give you every single organization that Texas Tech offers, whether it's transition engagement, which is what I work for, whether it's a Greek uh, sorority or fraternity or um, the Feral Cat Club. Like we have everything on campus that you could possibly need. Um, with your hobbies or whatever, just find whatever best fits for you and your interests. Um, I'm, I guarantee you, you're gonna find community somewhere. So look at that, that's a really great resource for you to use. All right, number nine is going to be, what should I bring to my dorm? Like what is essential? And it's I'm gonna say a microwave, a mini fridge, and curtains. Those are top three and I know those are kind of like, what? But let me explain. The microwave, you're gonna want to microwave stuff in your dorm. Like whether it's ramen, popcorn, if you want to reheat something, you're you're just gonna need it. Um, a mini fridge, I use my mini fridge all the time. I put water in there, um, like little snacks that I need, like fruit or whatever. Um, you can just reach in here and get it instead of like going all the way down to the dining hall. It's, it's just super convenient. And then these curtains, this is what I'm talking about. I put it over, if you're gonna be in like a standard dorm, I put it over my um, closet just so like people aren't seeing the mess in there if it gets a little messy. Um, it, they're definitely super useful. Um, if you're wondering about the microwave and the mini fridge, I made a registry for my graduation gifts. Um, and so like if people wanted to give me graduation gifts or give me graduation money, I put a, like a list of things that I needed on my registry so that people could get the things that I really needed. So that could also be something that you could do. Um, so yeah, just some advice. Oh, and a vacuum, but you can usually rent those downstairs in like your little area. They'll usually like just give you the vacuum. So if you want to spend money, get a vacuum. If not, just use the one that's downstairs in your little lobby. Alrighty gang, halfway there, we're at number 10. So do you have time for a job in college? The answer is yes, I have a lot of time and I actually have two jobs. So transition engagement, this vlogging job is something that I do, but I also work at Pi Bar in Lubbock. Um, it's a super chill job. I would say just kind of um, look at your schedule, manage your time really well. And I think that a job is super useful, especially if you have student loans like me and they need to be paid off. So. Alrighty guys, number 11 is, do you have to live on campus your first year? Yes, the answer is yes. Um, this is a Texas Tech rule just because they want you to really like immerse yourself into the college atmosphere. Um, it's super important that like freshman year you really find that core group of people because loneliness sucks, it really does. But when you find that community, it's so much easier like when you're on campus, you can be like, hey, do you wanna go eating a dining hall? Or hey, do you wanna go to the rec? Or do you wanna go study at the library or whatever? And it's super convenient when you're right on campus so you don't have to drive off. Obviously in future years, you're gonna wanna like have an apartment or have a house and that's super cool. But your first year you need to, I would say live on campus and it's a rule, so. Alrighty, number 12. I don't know which way this is gonna face, so. <laughs> number 12 is gonna be, what do you use to take notes in class? I personally use my computer depending on the class and then like for my maths or my sciences, I usually just use a pen and paper. Super simple, I just learn the best whenever I write it. I know some people use an iPad and an Apple pen. I know some people only use a computer. It's really just up to you and whatever your note taking style is, um, but that's just honestly what works best for me. Alrighty, number 13 is going to be what is the class size and um, how big are they typically? Like, does it depend on the class? And the answer is yes. So like your freshman year, you're gonna have all your basics and everybody has to take those. So like your sciences, your maths, like English, all that. So typically they're gonna be in lecture halls for the most part. So you'll have like hundreds of kids in your class, um, but it's because they have to teach it to a wide variety of people. And it really doesn't matter your major because the basics are just what you need for your basic degree. It really starts to happen whenever you get like your junior and mostly your senior year when you get like super super small class sizes of like between like 15 and 20 um just because those classes are super super specific and you only need them for like for me like i'm a psychology major like psychological disorders class or whatever it is like those are super specific to my major specifically so you're only going to have a little bit of people in those classes number 14 is going to be do i need cleaning supplies for my dorm yes yes you do I would recommend getting a duster, um, multi-surface spray. I use, um, I believe it's like the Myers brand. Um, and then if you consider this like cleaning, but like laundry stuff, you'll need like dryer sheets, um, Tide Pods or detergent, softener, fabric softener, whatever. Um, and then also like a sweep and a mop, a sweep, a, a broom, a broom and a mop. Um, you'll need that. Um, me and my roommate just use like a little Swiffer mopper. It's just to kind of keep the room tidy, I think. Um, and then Clorox wipes is probably gonna be the last of like the cleaning supplies that I think are essential. So 15 is going to be, what is the best dining location on campus? And again, this is kind of a hot take. It's really just up to you. I would say that the market's really good. That one has fazolis in it. Um, they have really good chicken tenders there, really good smoothies. Um, but if you kind of want like the best, like if you want like buffet style, I know the fresh plate, which I believe is in Bledsoe is really good. Um, the commons is probably where I eat the most often just because my classes are kind of just around the commons. Um, and then the sub has Chick-fil-A in it. 
really good. I would say those are probably the most popular. And then Honors has Starbucks. So those are kind of the, like, I would say the best in my opinion. But honestly, every dining hall has something to offer and every one of them is just as good. All right, so number 16 is going to be how many hours do you recommend taking? And again, this is really a hot take, it's up to you. My first semester, I took 13 hours. So I took um, four classes, no, I lied, <laughs> five classes. Um, four of them had three credits, so I was taking 12, and then one of them was just like a one credit class. Um, so I ended up taking only 13 hours, but I would say if you feel like you wanna just load it on, 15 to 16 is pretty standard, I would say. I'm taking 16 hours this um, semester, but I wanted to kind of just chill out my first semester, kind of get a feel for what college is like, and so I didn't wanna stress myself out too much, but if you're a diehard and you're like, I'm ready, I got it, I know I can take it on, I would just say take a lot and just figure out what works best for you personally. Number 17 is going to be, are all of our exams in person? And the answer is no. A lot of your exams are actually going to be online. This is just like, I'm talking about like regular tests. When you get to like midterms and final exams, they're usually in person. Um, but with like normal exams, um, just like tests for like specific classes, they're usually gonna be on Blackboard. Um, you'll have like Proctorio, which is like a lockdown browser. So it'll like watch you take your test to make sure like there's no cheating or anything. Um, but you'll mostly just take your test online in Blackboard, which again is the um, like, um, online thing that we use for Texas Tech um, and then sometimes tests will be in person like my psychology class last semester we did all of our exams in person so it's really just up to whatever like the discretion of your professor Alrighty guys, number 18 is going to be how do you navigate around campus? And the simple answer is going to be Google Maps. Um, whether you're living on campus or you're a commuter student taking the bus and you just don't know where a hall is, just type in like if you need to go to Holden Hall or you need to go to the MCOM building, just be like, Media and Communications Building Texas Tech in your Google Maps and it will give you the best like walking distance or if you're taking your car or a bus or whatever, it's gonna give you the best and quickest route to that specific destination. So number 19 is going to be, how did you decide your major? And this was pretty hard for me because honestly, at the beginning of senior year, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had a lot of ideas and I had a lot of hobbies that I liked, but I didn't really know how to narrow it down. Um, but I knew that I wanted to do something with like helping people like humanities and that kind of thing. So I thought, well, counseling would be super cool. So I knew um, that counseling, you needed like psychology or like some kind of that field where you understood like people's like how minds work, obviously. Um, so I just kind of did some research on like what degrees you would need for um, counseling or like therapy and that was kind of how I chose my degree. Um, I know some people it's a lot more complex or like a lot more simple than that, but that's just what I did. All right guys, so the last and final question is how did I handle the transition between high school and college? And let me tell you girl, it is not easy. Um, I rushed at the beginning of my freshman year and it was honestly the best decision I made just because I made my best friends there. Um, but I know some people, don't rush and I know some people don't um, get involved as quickly as I did on campus and so the transition from high school to college is really difficult just because you're like I said you're trying to find that group of people you're trying to find your group figure out what works really good for you um, but I would say like getting plugged into a community somewhere super quick is the best way to make friends and the best way to make that transition easier um, I know that like the first month is gonna be really rough because you're on your own you don't know what to do with all this freedom but I would say that finding community is going to be the best way to um, make that transition from high school to college so much easier. All right, guys, that concludes the um, 20 questions asked by college incoming freshmen. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you feel like that there's some more questions that you have, go ahead and comment them down below. We would love to answer those questions for you guys. I know that coming to college and that transition is gonna be super wild and a crazy time, but if we could just make that transition a little bit easier for you guys, then we did our job. So go ahead and comment down below if you have anything. Make sure you like and subscribe. We almost hit a thousand subscribers, so we would love to go ahead and do that by the end of this, by the end of this semester and I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week. Bye guys!